Let's take a look at this problem. We have an ideal air standard Brayton cycle. Well, before we move on, let's just take a look at this. It's a Brayton cycle, meaning we have a compressor, a burner, it's a heat exchanger, a turbine, and then to close the cycle, we introduce another heat exchanger, which is for heat rejection. Now, it's an air standard, so all of these components has just pure air going through it. And it says ideal. What does ideal mean? Well, the compressor and the turbine have isentropic efficiencies of 100%. Okay. It's operating at steady state. It produces 30 megawatts of power. And operating data at the principal states, state 1, state 2, state 3, state 4, state 1, 2, 3, 4, the, the property data of pressure, temperature, and enthalpy are given. Okay, so determine the mass flow rate of air. This net power out of the cycle is given for this problem. It's 30 megawatts. Okay, to get that, it's related to the mass flow rate of the air going through each component of the cycle. So in order to solve for the mass flow rate of air, we know that the power out of the cycle, which is given for this problem, 30 megawatts, is equal to the mass flow rate of the air, what we're asked to solve for, times the lowercase w net of the cycle. What's that lowercase net work out for the cycle? Well, to calculate that lowercase work net, I would construct another table. I would have component, and then I would have you can do it a couple different ways, but I'm mimicking an energy balance around each component. And so for each component, we would have the Q coming in in terms of kilojoules per kilogram. That would be the heat transfer into the component per kilogram of air flowing through, as well as the work for each of the component. And we write the uh, conservation of energy, the energy balance for each component. It's an open system. It's, it's so, I mean, it's a control volume. It's an open system analysis. A general way of writing it would be uh, zero is equal to cap Q dot coming in. That's a bad looking Q. Let me try that again. Q, ah, come on. Q dot coming in, minus W dot going out, plus the mass flow rate, which is steady state, it's constant, going in and out the same. We have the enthalpy coming in. I'm going to call it state 1 on the in, state 2 on the out for the compressor. Or another way to write that would be um, just, just do 0 is equal to the H1 minus H2 plus lowercase q minus w. So I would make a table. One way to make a table is for each component, basically it's the change in the enthalpy. You could, you could write it as H in minus the H exit. That would be okay. And then you would have the lowercase q in, as well as the lowercase w out. And each of these have the same units of uh, kilojoules per kilogram, kilojoules per kilogram, and kilojoules per kilojoules per kilogram. And basically, you're writing like this part of the energy balance, this part of the energy balance, this part of the energy balance. Okay. So let's go through the compressor. And so it'd be the H1 minus the H2. So here's H1. Subtract off H2. And then you find that this is negative 279.5. Let's continue on this column before we go to the other ones. We had the burner. I'm going to call it burner. That's heat exchanger burner. And so it would be the H in of 2 minus the H out of 3. 
And so that's a po uh, not a positive, a negative 1206.3. And then for the turbine, the H3 minus to H4 is a positive 823.8. And then for that other heat exchanger that's rejecting heat, it's the 662.0. All right. We're going to work on the Q's and the W's now. And so for the compressor, the standard assumption is, is there is no heat transfer. So put a big zero there. And likewise, for the turbine, it's adiabatic, zero. The burner, there's no shaft power in or out. And the heat exchanger, no shaft power in or out. So four of these eight values equal to zero. It's now computing the other four. Well, we take a look for the compressor. Here is kind of the en energy balance written for the compressor. We just said it's adiabatic, so this Q is zero. And so the work, when I flip it to the other side, is equal to H in minus H out. So the work is negative 279.5. Where did I get that from? Right here. All right. So, oops, 279.5. And you can do the same thing for the turbine. Analyze the turbine. Same, the Q is zero. The work is just H in minus the H out. And this one is 823.8. At this point, we could sum to get W net. And W net, the sum of that column comes in at 544.3 kilojoules per kilogram. We come right up here. So 544.3 kilojoules per kilogram. This work of the cycle, I put it from 30 megawatts to 30,000 kilowatts. Then you're left with M dot A, the only unknown in this equation. I'm just going to say that M dot A comes in to be 55.1 kilograms per second. And that's our answer for part A. Okay, well, let me finish this table because that's what's going to be needed for part B. So for part, for if I look at the burner right here, the energy balance, the Q is not zero, but what's zero? The W is zero for the, for the burner. And so the Q is the minus of the H in minus H out for that burner. So it's basically just changing the sign right here to 1206.3. And then likewise, for that heat exchanger, it's rejecting negative 662.0. We do a sum to calculate QNet. It's 544.3. We compare these two to make sure that we don't have an error. They are the same. It's great. So QNet of the cycle is equal to WNet of the cycle. Okay, now let's go back to part B. It said, what is the rate of heat transfer in kilowatts to the working fluid passing through the heat exchanger? Well, I'm going to try and um, put it right here that the, the, the Q dot coming in, that's right here, Q dot coming in is equal to the mass flow rate of that air, which we just solved for from part A, times the lowercase Q in the burner, which is the 1206.3 kilojoules per kilogram. So the Q dot in comes out at uh, 66,500 kilowatts. That's the answer for part B. Again, where did A come from? Well, that's the 55.1 kilograms per second. Where did this Q? That's the 1206.3. Okay. And then the last part. What is the thermal efficiency of this cycle? Well, the thermal efficiency, by definition, is what we want. We want a large net out of the cycle, work out for the cycle, divided by what we had to pay for to bring in that's the Q in, 
and so we can just say it's a 544.3 divided by the 1206.3 and the thermal efficiency of the cycle comes in at 45.1 percent and that's the answer for part C.